So um, thank you for having me today at Sophie Symposium and good morning, good evening, good afternoon and good evening to, uh, uh, to you and um, a bit of introduction about this presentation and how this was uh, came along. And um, so the idea of this presentation comes from a real exercise to practice environmental parity uh, for a piece of software called IoT Fleetwise Edge. Uh, that AWS has written and made open source. This piece of software uh, mm, pairs with uh, a managed service called IoT Fleetwise. Of course, the session today is not about Fleetwise, but uh, I want to give you uh, a, a bit of context so that we uh, you also uh, uh, can see the, the, the demo uh, later. So Fleetwise uh, is a managed service that you can use to collect, transform, transfer vehicle data to the cloud in the near real time. And uh, you organize, you model your car uh, through uh, signals through uh, Covisa VSS. And uh, through a piece of software, which is actually the, this, this age uh, sitting on board, you can basically instruct from the cloud uh, through the, the things called campaigns to collect uh, uh, signals from the car and uh, transfer to, uh, to the cloud. So the idea is to try to run a Fleetwise agent uh, or edge uh, on an eWall and, uh, and see what, uh, uh, how we, are, we stand from the environmental parity point of view. So a bit of bison here, we start from the cloud side. Uh, so, and uh, you can see from the bottom, uh, the, the different layers, starting from the infrastructure, which is based on, uh, in this case, uh, Graviton EC2 instances. So hard V8 uh, virtual machines, running EVOL version V1, the latest version uh, with, uh, with additional socket can. And, and on top of that, you have the, the orchestration layer, which, as you know, is, is based on K3S. Uh, uh, on the top layer, you have different containers, uh, the, the Fleetwise Edge container on one side. And since we are on the cloud, we have no physical bus, physical canvas. So we have created a container uh, that would simulate uh, basically the car. Uh, the third piece uh, of this uh, puzzle is is really the the, the manifest. So the the, uh, the the YAML file that usually is given to the orchestrator to say how you want to uh, let's say organize and connect uh, the various uh, uh, resources. Um, so let's have a, a quick uh, uh, demo of what I've just shown. Um, hopefully, it's not too small. And um, so you have this, uh, uh, this YAML uh, with the, the different pieces starting from an initial container that set up the, the network side. And then you have the, the two container. One is the Fleetwise and the second one is the, the, the vehicle simulator. And then uh, some other resources that allow you to, let's say, expose the, the virtual simulator UI. So now we switch to the target. Uh, this is the, the Graviton, uh, uh, let's say, virtual machine, uh, spin up uh, this, uh, 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 this manifest into Kubernetes. And this will bring up very quickly, um, of course, the image um, are already there. And you get the, uh, the logging of, of the, the Fleetwise H. And, um, and, st and the data start to flow from the vehicle to, to the cloud. Now we switch to the AWS console. You see the target here uh, based on uh, T, T4G um, instance. And then we switch to the, the actual uh, virtual uh, um, simulator. We change few parameters. We go back to the, um, uh, to the console and we see the data that is flowing into the cloud. In this case, it's time streams, it's time series database and the data that we have seen, okay. So having seen this uh, demo, that's what up, actually happened in, in the cloud. Okay, let's see how this uh, translates into a physical uh, now um, target. 
So in the physical target, of course, you have a real canvas. So you would wire differently uh, the container uh, to the to the to the vehicle, and um, and uh, um, and that's the first difference. But likely, uh, this has no impact on the on the container itself. So it needs just to be uh, let's say set up in a different way. So here we have parity uh, at the binary level, supposing that the ECU, of course, is based on RV8. But on the right side, you have the manifest, which is the red box. So the red box uh, highlights one important thing, that the manifest will be very different from the virtual to the, to the, uh, to the, to the physical. Okay. So, uh, and that's not, I would say, ideal. So uh, we want to find a way to abstract the orchestration. And the way to abstract the orchestration, at least the way I found, is through something called CDKs. So CDKs is, a, is, a, is about here hold open source um, project that start from the idea that you instead to Let's say use YAML as a way to express the orchestration setup, the wished state of the orchestrator. You can use uh, uh, an, an already existing uh, high-level programming language uh, to uh, abstract that uh, that things. And this is very useful, has been used in other contexts, uh, but it's useful also because uh, makes your um, your code much more uh, smaller and much more easier to reason about and um, and also to apply the typical programming language uh, uh, advantage of having modularization and abstractions. So you start from the code and the code can be written in various languages like TypeScript, JavaScript, uh, Python, Java, and Golang. And executing the process of synthesis, you can basically generate uh, your your YAML, and um, and of course, having a programming language, you can use all the tools that comes with them. Uh, so that's the beauty of using a modern programming language. So let's see how this looks like in a real uh, in our real use case. So on the left hand side. Uh, you find that in this case, I use TypeScript to basically express what we have seen earlier in terms of uh, YAML. And uh, using, for example, in this case, uh, an, an if uh, uh, construct, you can, let's say, uh, remove or add, depending where you are running this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, workload, the virtual, um, the, the virtual simulator, the vehicle simulator, and wire, of course, the the bus not to to it, but to to a real uh, to the to a real bus. Of course, this translate into into the YAML. Uh, so the YAML that is generated by CDKs is no different from a real uh, a real uh, what you would write. Uh, let, let, let me say by hand. So uh, so if we accept a CDKs as another layer of abstraction, and we now see the two target uh, the virtual and the physical next to each other, uh, we can see that the top artifact that you have here are exactly the same. So you can use the same container images, but also the same, uh, the same orchestrator code, which of course will synthesize in a different way uh, depending, depending on the target. In summary, so we went through uh, this example where we show how to run uh, uh, a container um, that would be connecting to uh, a canvas in both the virtual and the, uh, a physical target running on eWorld. We have seen how to orchestrate this container uh, with, with K3S, the, the orchestrator of choice uh, for eWorld. But also we have seen these new things about CDKs as a way to improve the, the software development process, abstracting the, the orchestration layer. All the, uh, the things and the code that was developed for this, uh, uh, this example, 
will be available on GitHub at this address starting from December 1st. And uh, of course, uh, very welcome to answer any question you may have. Thank you, Francesco. I think there are a couple of questions already in the Q&A box for you. Um, uh, really interesting. Um, I believe also for anybody going to AWS reInvent, I think this will be live there. Is that correct, Francesco? That's, that's correct. Yes. So that's a good incentive to come along to AWS reInvent to see Sophie in action. 